You can make people look at something just by making it look different than everything that's around it because your eye goes to where the most contrast is first. So in this photo of a row of scientific posters, whose legs do you see first? The blue pants, right? Which poster do you notice first? Probably the one of these three if it's not a wall of text. Within that single poster, which part of the poster do your eyes go to first? The big dark square on the left with the highest contrast. iQuant is my favorite AI tool that predicts where people are gonna look on any design. And if you run iQuant on this photo, it predicts that you're going to look exactly where you probably just did. It even predicted the blue pants. If you don't have a lot of design training, you can think that design is just making things look pretty. But this example shows pretty clearly that there's a science to the effects of design. The easiest way to use this knowledge in the science communications that you design, the posters, the slides, the data visualizations is just to make one important thing pop out by giving it the most contrast. But what about this graph? You can't really tell whether the top or the bottom is more important and you can't use like a different color to trigger that sense. Remember that you control the object's color and the background color. On a dark background you can make one of the sides of this graph pop out by making it lighter and the other bars darker closer to the background, less contrast. But if I remove this dark background and give it a light background, you'll see it kind of flips where the opposite side pops out at you. There's one really important way that this sort of pop out effect of contrast applies to your science communication and how you design it, and that's scientific posters. There are zillions of articles out there like how do you get attention on your scientific poster, how to create an eye catching poster, literally just contrast. Just make your poster look different than the other posters beside it. Not like a little different, like change a heading color or whatever, but like really, really different. And I suspect that's kind of hard to hear for a lot of you if you're PhD students, because the advice you're going to get from everyone else, the advice that your advisor is going to want you to follow is something like, I want you to look like everybody else. Looking like everybody else feels professional. Looking different actually gets you attention. Choose. So here's another example where scientific communication can use a little more contrast, where you've got sort of a takeaway title on top, and you've got a caption for the graph on bottom, and you've got your reference or your citation down here on the bottom right. Now my real answer here is you don't need the caption or the citation, you can just delete those. But if you want to leave it, then you can use this background contrast effect to make people look in the right order. Right now all three pieces of that text have the same level of background contrast, so they're all pulling about the same focus. But we can do this, where the takeaway is very high contrast, the caption is kind of medium contrast, and the citation is very low contrast. Almost so low to be inaccessible, but that information really isn't important. So just push it way back. Now people are more likely to read this text in the right order, from most important to least important. You can also use this kind of less and less background contrast concept to guide people's eyeballs through the content within a scientific poster by creating higher and lower contrast zones. Here's a poster layout that used background contrast really effectively to direct people's eyeballs. Forget the title for now, but it has these three zones. The magic of this poster is really right here at this line, where it switches between black text on white background to black text on a gray background. And then down here we have gray on gray. It's the same trick. These are high contrast, medium contrast, low contrast. And when we ran eye tracking on this poster, as you can see started right here, people read it in almost exactly the correct order. So mood affects attention at work, top part, now the key figures and two takeaways. And right here you can see there's like 13 people and nobody is down here in the black text on gray background yet. They're still in that high contrast zone. And then they'll move into the lower contrast, about there. And they're still all mostly ignoring that like author bar at the bottom, which I want them to. So you can see how this simple background contrast is really, really effective at helping people look in the right order on your designs. There's a study that tried to answer the question, what makes a design feel like a good design or a bad design? And using eye tracking, they found that on the good design, people's eyes moved across it in a very similar order. On the bad design, people kind of didn't know where to look and they were all over the place. So an amateur designer can't control eye movements or doesn't think about it. Controlling eye movements is almost everything to improving your science communication. And the biggest factor in controlling those eye movements is contrast, what you just learned.